Now, I think it's very fair to say that when we look at the Walt Disney Company, two of the most failed divisions over there is, of course, Marvel Studios and you got Lucasfilm, especially with the current drama surrounding the Acolyte trailer backlash and the upcoming Rey Star Wars movie by director Charmin Obeid Chinoy that is 100%, by the way, produced by Kathleen Kennedy. This is Mike Zero. Subscribe if you're new and like this video to see future updates. You can also follow me at Mike Zero One. I thank you also very much for the great and kind support. So, showrunner and director Leslie Headland of the Acolyte series. All right, well, you know that she has been defending this series through and through, day by day, ever since the trailer dropped. I believe it was on the 18th of March. And interestingly enough, we know that the drama and the backlash is only getting Getting worse. Literally every single Acolyte trailer has been ratioed across the board and this is a big signal that fans are beginning to wake up even further after Disney's nonsense throughout all of 2023 and the continued destruction of the Star Wars franchise under Kathleen Kennedy's wing essentially over at Lucasfilm. Now, what's interesting about this whole situation is how you have one like Leslie Headland, who, by the way, is the former personal assistant of Harvey Weinstein. I think everyone should really know that. These are the types of people that Disney and let alone Lucasfilm, as well as Kathleen Kennedy, hire to really direct and steer Star Wars and their own path. Now, moving forward from all of this, what's interesting about this has a lot to do with Leslie Headland and her nonsense and how she is endlessly defending the Acolyte after the trailer disaster that began a couple of weeks ago. Now, with Lucasfilm already beginning to face a series of expensive failures on the horizon, like the Acolyte and the planned Rey Star Wars film, one major development has to do with the Acolyte director and showrunner Leslie Headland, where she delivered the following to everyone. As a feminist, and one that supports other feminists, I think the Acolyte was a dream come true, and I have to give full credit to Kathy Kennedy for really making that happen. You are always going to get naysayers and those that claim to be true fans, but actual Star Wars fans don't force others into listening to their biased, loud, opinionated takes that only divide the fandom further. These are the type of opinions that need to be silenced, I think, and just kept in a vault, you know? Because some fans claim to be open-minded with a creator's vision, and obviously with what we created with the Acolyte, you are always going to have those opposed to certain characters associated with different genders or race. To us at Lucasfilm, diversity and equality was our number one priority to really focus on this project to make it feel authentic to the audience. When you have loud, opinionated, so-called fans that I think are just posers, you begin to deal with others that are just trying to enjoy the build-up that have to deal with tainted fans that really don't know what they are talking about. We are doing wonderful things with the Acolytes such as taking elements from the expanded universe, or as others like to call it, legends, and how we could fit it into our narrative to promote our views and struggles with the modern world. I said this before, but so many fans think they know how a series is going to fail, and that's the type of toxic culture we live in today. I just think fandom culture in general is very toxic and can be difficult to deal with. But what was also very important to me about the series was hiring different creators that really didn't know anything about Star Wars, and it's something that Kathy Kennedy agreed with me about. When you have some creators that don't know what they are getting into, they remain unbiased. And with that, you get a fresh take on a series as big as this. Sometimes you need writers or directors that really know nothing about this brand to offer something so original to a complex fan base. Our aim for diversity, equity, and inclusion is exactly what the Acolyte represents. And I think it just becomes offensive, quite frankly, seeing a small, loud part of the community that remains opposed to that. It's proof that our world needs fixing. You don't need George or the Skywalkers to make Star Wars work. And midway through production, we knew going in that we had to gravitate toward new fans to increase that type of acceptance. I take pride in what Kathy allowed me and my team to create and the talented cast that we involved in this series that really promotes diversity and equality. Now guys, let me just stop here quick before I move on. Now, again, Leslie Headland openly admitting that she hired some writers that really know nothing about the Acolyte, or a co-writers to be specific. 
writers that really know nothing about Star Wars, nothing about the philosophy or the lore or anything to do with canon. And this is exactly why people have been frustrated and just over with Star Wars and want nothing to do with it anymore because Kathleen Kennedy hires people that hires other people in turn to dis diminish Star Wars down to nothingness. We saw this happen with Joby Harold. We saw this happen with other creators involved in multiple Star Wars series and or projects. And Charmin Obeid Chinoy is another example of the Rey Star Wars movie that is still in development. In fact, they plan to begin filming this thing by the third quarter of this year. But that's, an that's another subject. Focusing on this, we know that the Acolyte series is not going to live up to any kind of expectations. A lot of people are crossing fingers that this is going to be like something to do with Darth Plagueis or something around the, those lines to connect it to Palpatine's storyline. It's not going to be anything like that guaranteed. This is a vicious cycle by Lucasfilm. They make you think that you're going to have something massive like that happen, when really, this is going to be its own thing. So, Leslie Headland also openly admitting that she wanted nothing to do with George or the Skywalkers or anything related to it in that sense to George's philosophy. And look, I get it. Star Wars doesn't have to always be about the Skywalkers. I get that. But to have that, no to have that overall framework in your mind that you have to do no more Skywalker related stories ever again. It just goes to show your agenda and what you want to do. That's why they focused on the on the High Republic. It's a clean slate for them to push their overall agenda. They don't have to respect any form of canon. This is exactly why she's ripping off Star Wars Legends, also known as the Expanded Universe, and really like she said fitting it with the modern world because she believes that the modern world needs fixing. Another lunatic if you ask me. Moving on, she goes on to conclude, you don't need experienced writers all the time to make this story work. Sometimes you need a fresh take from creators that want, of course, to focus on diversity and equality and a story to increase that authenticity with the audience. And that's why I think the naysayers will be surprised when they enjoy The Acolyte once we drop the show on Disney Plus this June. I have been so honored to work with Kathy on this one. Now, this is the same person, by the way, guys. All right, Leslie Headland that said, whatever you think The Acolyte is, it isn't. All right, so that's what she said. Now, I'm pretty sure that we all have a general grasp of where this is all going. Do you guys not realize that when you look at the Acolyte series, it kind of reminds you of Reva in the Kenobi series, where you have this main villain, you have one of the main villains, right, in the storyline, you think they're going to be all bad and whatnot, and they end up just getting redeemed. That's exactly what I believe is going to happen with the main Sith in the Acolyte series. It's very, uh, very much apparent at this point that that's what she's gravitating toward after she said that she's going to bring new meaning to the Sith and what the Sith really all are about, they want to really reframe that, all right? And when Leslie said that last week, it just goes to show you their nonsense in this storyline. So overall, guys, you know, drop a comment below, fill me in below in the comments what you all have to say about this. And if you guys did enjoy the content for today, make sure to drop a thumbs up on this video to support the channel, and I will catch you guys later. Yeah.